In this video, we're going to take a look at some integrals that um, involve inverse trig functions. <clears throat> We've been looking at how to take derivatives of inverse trig functions. Now we're going to change gears and look at um, integrals that involve inverse trig functions. Um, <clears throat> now, the best way to approach this is actually to take just a second and remind ourselves about the derivatives of inverse trig functions because that's going to really help us in just a second. So every inverse trig function has a derivative. Uh, I suggested to you in the last video to put these on flashcards, so hopefully you have these memorized already, um, because the better you know these, the better you'll be able to do when we do integrals that involve um, these inverse trig functions as well. All right, now when we do an inverse uh, trig integral or, or, or you know something like that, we're usually not going to be integrating the, actually the inverse trig function. The logic goes like this. If the derivative of these inverse trig functions give you these things, then it only stands to reason that if you integrated that if you integrated something that looks like this, you would get an inverse trig function back. So when we say when we use the phrase inverse trig integrals, typically what we mean is an integral that gives you an inverse trig function, not that we're, we're not typically gonna be um, actually integrating inverse trig functions themselves. Sometimes we will, but that's that's not primarily what, what we're talking about. So um, here's really the key thing we wanna notice about this. This is kind of the, the big observation that makes this a little bit easier, in my opinion, than taking derivatives of inverse trig uh, expressions. Look at these guys, there's six of them, right? There's six of these guys. And if you notice, there's <clears throat> quite a bit of similarity in these six. Uh, for instance, look at, uh, da, 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 let's see, look at arc sine and arc cosine's derivative. Look at these two, uh, I'll highlight these in green. They're practically the same. There's just a subtle difference of this negative sign. That's really the only difference there. Look at, um, arc tangent and arc cotangent. Look, look at these two guys. You've got this guy and you've got this guy. They're, they're the same thing uh, apart from a minus sign for the arc cotangent. And then look at um, inverse cosecant and inverse secant. You see how these can be paired together in twos? These are the same, these are the same, and these are the same um, without considering the minus sign. So they basically just differ by a sign. Now, the reason this is important is if you were going to integrate, uh, oh, let's say something like um, an expression like this. Look at this one right here. If you're going to integrate an expression like this, do you remember that property of definite integrals or indefinite integrals for that matter, there, where you could take a, a negative or any coefficient and move it outside the integral? Uh, hopefully you remember that property. So if our expression has an, a negative sign, you could move it out and it'll just be like one of the other types that doesn't have the negatives. So in fact, here's what we can do. Let, let me get rid of all these colors here. Anybody who has a negative, we can basically ignore them because if we had an expression again with a negative, we could pull the negative outside the integral and then we could just consider the positive version. Now what that's going to do is it's going to cut the cases we have to memorize in half. We don't have to memorize six integrals, we have to memorize three integrals. Okay, so let me, let me make this a little bit more clear for you. So here's integrals that involve inverse trig functions. Um, it's these three guys right here. And you notice these look similar to the three we had on the last page. Now, why do none of these have negatives? Well, if you happen to have somebody who fits this model who had a negative, again, I'll say you can simply take that negative and move it on the outside, and then you would not have to con uh, actually consider that negative. Um, now, you notice these look a little different than what I had on the previous page. Um, these are a, a good bit more general than, uh, um, if I can spell, general. These are a little bit more general than the um, templates on the, the last page, just because we're trying to leave these um, just as flexible as we can to handle any type of situation. But nevertheless, even though I've got some different letters in here, you'll still probably be able to guess who these match up with. Let's look at number one. If you have an integral that fits the mold, fits the template, du divided by the square root of a squared minus u squared. Um, just w which of these do you think it, that template's gonna fit? 
probably this guy, probably arc sine. And, and in fact, that's right. In fact, that is the case. So this guy's integral, uh, an expression like this, his integral <clears throat> would be arc sine or sine inverse. I'll just write arc sine. Arc sine of u over a. And then there's a plus c simply because it's a definite integral. Uh, an indefinite integral rather, excuse me, an indefinite integral, um, we, <clears throat> which we always put plus C's for those guys. Okay, now you look at this U over A, that's really the big difference. You say, well, Devin, is that the same as what was on the last page? Well, kind of, it just wasn't the, uh, as clear as it is here. Here's an X squared and here's technically a one squared. So X is your U and one is your A. So look at what's inside the arc expression here. It's really u over a. It's really, in this case, x over 1. That's where the x is coming from. <clears throat> but this makes it easier if you have not just a 1, but maybe like a square root of 4 minus x squared. Then it'll still fit this generic template of a squared minus u squared. And you can still do the integral, even if this constant's not a 1. All right, who does number two look like? du over a squared plus u squared. Uh, if you had to guess out of these uh, three remaining ones, probably, uh, I'll change colors, probably arctan, probably arctan, that's who it kind of looks like. And in fact, that, that's true, that's, that is the case. So this guy's integral, leave a little space, I've got something else to write, but it would basically be arctan, arctan of u over a, plus c and that's the majority of it but arctan has a little twist i don't think i'm going to take the time in this video to unpack why this is here <clears throat> but for arctan you have to put an extra term in the front of one over a so if this was like nine plus x squared and a would be three because three squared is nine you would put one third arctan of x over three plus c all right, so you have to put a 1 over A out front. <clears throat> All right, the last one, let's see if we can guess who he is. Uh, he kind of looks like this, kind of process of elimination, arc secant, arc secant. So this would be arc secant, arc secant of blank plus C. He has a 1 over A out front like arctan does. Arc sign's the only one who doesn't have one, but um, arctan and arc secant do have a 1 over A out front. Now, arc secant has a little bit of a twist as well. Rather than simply u over a, you put the absolute value of u over a. All right, so that, that's our three templates. Um, I would recommend making up flashcards for these and just practicing, 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 memorize these three guys. Um, and again, it's a lot better than six. I know, I know it still looks like a lot, but um, I would still rather memorize three as, as opposed to six. <clears throat> okay, now once you have these memorized, they're fairly straightforward to use. I'm not going to take a lot of time to work a, a big example in this video because it's already getting kind of long. But um, let me just do a short example for you. This is a very easy example. All right, somebody hands you an integral like this and they say, compute this integral. Well, right off the bat, you the first thing you might think is actually not inverse trig stuff at all. Uh, a Calc 1 student, if I handed this type of problem, the first thing they would probably think is possibly u substitution. And that's not a bad idea. That's a good idea. That um, We see composition. We see the radical. Calc 1 student would likely think u substitution. And if that was the case, the u would be... 9 minus x to the fourth, but there's a problem. There's a reason this is not u substitution. The du would be negative 4x cubed, and notice we don't have a negative 4x cubed, and we can't create a negative 4x cubed because there's no more x's. So good idea, but it just doesn't exactly work. But what I, what I should notice next then is I should say to myself, hey, that kind of looks like one of these templates. Matter of fact, it kind of kind of looks like this template, doesn't it? Kind of looks like the arc sign. So let me see if I can identify what's the U and what's the A for this uh, template. Look here. Do you think that the U is X to the fourth and the A is nine? Hopefully not. The A is actually three and the U is actually X squared. Now, why were these coming from? Because this is technically 3 squared minus 
x squared squared. It's a squared minus u squared. Um, a is the constant and uh, u is the variable. So make sure you always have that, that distinction correct here. So we have our correct u, we have our correct a. We're almost ready to fill in the blanks. We're almost ready to fill in our answer. But one other thing catches my eye. This negative. Ooh, I'm not really sure what to do about that negative. These templates, none of these three have any negatives. So what do I do to make it fit this template exactly? Should I come back here to the very beginning and search out one of these that has the negatives? No, I didn't memorize six. I only memorized three. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that negative. I'm going to move it outside the integral. I'm going to move it outside the integral. Now, normally I wouldn't do this next step, but I'm going to do it just for you, just, just for this video. I'm going to rewrite this. Normally, um, this is a little extra and is not really necessary, but just to make things clear in this video, I'm, I'm going to rewrite it. So it's uh, negative on the outside, one over big square root, three squared minus x squared squared. So it should be abundantly clear now that we have this exact template set to a T. It's this exact template. So I'm ready to fill in my answer now. This will be a, an arc sine integral. So I don't need a 1 over A. That's for the arc tan and the arc secant. So I'm just going to put arc sine of U over A, arc sine of U over A plus C. And really that's it. It's just plug and chug. You create the template, you find your U, you find your A, you plug it in, and you're done. Um, now, maybe I'm making this sound a little too simple. These can get a little trickier as far as the algebra goes, but, um, but on a basic level, at the end of the day, you're going to be doing something like this. So we'll have some more complicated examples coming up very shortly, so you can go ahead and fast forward to those videos now.